Hi everyone, it's Mr. Barden here. Today I'm going to be going over a project I do in my programming digital media class, which is having the students uh, choose eight sound files, loading them into a sketch, and then being able to trigger each sound file individually with a button. The next part has the students choosing audio effects uh, from Tone to load in and have them be able to uh, change the sound, and then we can change how much of the effect with an on-screen slider. So there's kind of two parts to this. Uh, I am my cat Bean. We'll see if she stays here the whole video. Uh, the, who knows? Uh, we'll be kind of going through with a condensed version of this. <clears throat> Because once you've got the idea for the first few sounds, it's basically just repeating that process. Uh, just to you know, be a, a resource online for uh, anyone who wants to make this kind of thing if you aren't in my class. And for any students who you know, are learning that, hmm, there's a lot of online resources for coding. Uh, maybe I can do some uh, Googling about things. Uh, Anyways, let's just hop right into it. The first thing I'll let you know, um, first off, this sketch uh, will actually not be available uh, in the uh, video description. Because this is for a big project that my students do, I want them to, uh, you know, do it themselves. If you would like your, you know, to find this or get access to it, uh, leave a comment below, and I can, uh, you know, get that to you your way with some, uh, you know, contact info. We can work that out. But for my students, you gotta make your own. Um, all right, being you, you'd be a lot more comfortable if you just got comfy and sat down. All right, before we get started, this is what I'll have on my desk the whole time. So say hi, Bean. All right. Let me also just, since I'm already in the process of moving the camera, I want that a little bit higher. Okay, so let's hop into it. This sketch already has P, uh, not P5 play. It does have P5 play in it, but it has a uh, tone included already. I'm not going to go over how to do that. Uh, how to get that loaded up. There's uh, plenty of uh, videos on my channel and other channels that go about how to implement that. So check those out, um, you know, if you need to learn more. Uh, this is definitely not a, you know, just starting out kind of project. Well, it's not too bad. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is make a, f a folder just to hold all my sounds and make life a little bit easier. So I'm just going to call this sounds. Um, I'm going to then click on my folder go over to this little triangle and we're going to upload some files. I've got them over here. My first one is a loop. I used that in a, another project recently and that's why I'm using it again because it was just recently in my downloads. I've then got a uh, just a percussive sound and then uh, kind of a hollow thunk of hitting a vase. Those are going to be the three ones we use for this project. Uh, again, for the what my students need to do, I make them pick eight sounds and four effects, but we're only doing three sounds and two effects, because once you've got to that point, you can work it out. Um, Alright, so back into the sketch. We're just going to start by getting the sounds loaded in, and then be able to trigger them with buttons. So, uh, I'm going to define the object that we're going to use to hold all of these. I'm just going to do the very, very generic multi uh, layer, I'll do it all lowercase this time, um, that is prevalent in a lot of the textbook material because it's a player, but it plays multiple sounds. Um, I'm also gonna, just going to go ahead and load up my buttons and sliders. Uh, I'll, just call, I'll call them real simple, but one, but two, but three, um, and then I don't know what effects we're going to use, so we're actually going to hold off on the sliders for now. And then we'll just say uh, stop but for uh, the stop button. Um, all right. So we're going to hop into preload right here. And we're just going to assign multiplayer player uh, to be a new tone.players object. And we're going to head into the argument, and using JSON uh, formatting, we're just going to indicate uh, a name for the play, the individual player within this larger object, as well as the um, file location. So again, basically, it's label file, label file. That's all we're giving it. Very, you know, JSON formatting, that kind of thing. Um, so 
let's just do that. Uh, so I'm just going to go with the first one. I'm just going to call it loop. And that is located at uh, the sounds folder slash, and then it is just loop one dot MP three comma next one. Uh, we'll call this, um, I don't know, uh, hit. Actually, no, I'll call this uh, per, per, just so it matches up. It's for percussive, percussion, it's percussive sound. Sounds slash, and this is perk underscore two dot mp3. You can tell I downloaded these from different places because they formatted the names differently. <coughs> and then uh, the last one, we'll just call this hit. And this is at sounds slash hit. 3.mp3, just like that. Uh, and so we have that all there, and I'm just going to hook these right up to the output speakers for now. Dot two, ooh, no space, to destination, just like so. Uh, so this way, uh, this, oop, one too many, there we are. So this way we can at least hear the sounds, and then we'll add in the audio effects in a moment. So at this point, all the sounds are ready to go. We now need to make the buttons in order to trigger them. So I'm just going to copy these to save some time. Um, so, but one, but two, but three and stop, but um, is going to be assigned to be the create button function. Uh, we're going to say uh, this is going to play sound one. So this will say uh, I'm just going to call this sound uh, one, two, and three because I'm boring. Um, but you can name these again whatever you want. Um, I'm just going to copy, paste, paste, sound one, ooh, -hoo, a three. Got that reference? Put it in the comments below. Um, and then last one um, will be oop, create button. Only this will be stop all sounds. There we are. Let's just tidy that up a little bit. All right, so we've made the buttons. Um, there's two more things uh, we need to do for every button. And that is um, to position it on the screen so we can see it and tell it what to do when we click on it. Right now, if we run this, it's just buttons, but they don't do anything. Nothing happens. It's like you just haven't wired it up, essentially. So, button one dot position. Uh, I don't really care what the position is for these buttons uh, when my students do it, as long as it's not a mess. Um, you know, I just want to you know make some kind of organizational sense. Um, you know, like I usually it's usually what I end up seeing is kind of, um, a grid or whether it, it be, you know, it's usually ends up being one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and kind of two rows and then two sliders, um, you know, one, two, three, four. That's usually what I end up seeing, but as long as it makes sense and isn't just a random gobbledygook of buttons and sliders, I'm, I'm fine with whatever. So I'm just going to kind of arbitrarily put these at, um, let's just say, 100, 100, 200, 100, 300, 100, and this will go at 200, uh, 350, way down at the bottom. Yeah, sure, that'll work for this one. Um we can adjust it if we really needed to, but now we need to add the callback function that tells us what each of these buttons are going to do. Don't give me that look. It's a callback function. That's what we're doing it. I just got a look from the cat. Um, all right. So we need to talk to each one. Oh, sorry. I, I petted you wrong, I guess. Uh, talk to each one and just use the mouse pressed method. So button one dot mouse. Pressed, um, and that'll tell us what we need. So I'm just going to put that there. Two, three, and 
stop but let's just tidy that up again um, so now we just need to make functions that will do this and i'm just going to make them real simple i'm going to call it uh, play um play sound one just going to copy that to save some time play sound two play sound three and uh i'll just call this uh mute why not uh, so now we just need to make these into functions so if i were to run my code right now we'd actually run into some errors because those functions we just listed don't exist so function play s1 this is gonna be again copy two three and mute. So just gonna update that. Mute. That's play sound three, play sound two. There we are. All right. So we've got these functions and they're just gonna have one line in them each. It's gonna be pretty simple. It's just telling our multiplayer object to, you know, locate this sound and play it. Um, yeah, sure, I'll save my sketch, why not? Um, so in here, we're just gonna say multi, not a capital P, keep wanting to do that. Multiplayer dot player. Uh, and this is where we tell it what to do. So loop was that na was the name of that first one. And we'll say dot start and chain those two methods together. Um, and we'll do that. Uh, and then I'll just look up a loop, perk hit. And hit. With my naming convention, um, high bean, uh, you know, it doesn't necessarily matter which sounds are, uh, you know, connected to which buttons, but if you have a descriptive uh, thing here, you're probably going to want to make sure everything lines up. In order to stop the sounds, what we can do is just say multiplayer dot stop all. If you're in my class watching this video, you may be a little confused uh, because in a previous assignment, I said we don't use stop all. And that's just because uh, if for that assignment, we were using just a normal player object um, <coughs> where we just tell it to stop. Uh, with the players object, players with an S that has multiple individual player objects, you can either tell an individual player to stop, or by saying stop all, it will stop everything. So now we have a way to stop a sound for whatever we might need. Uh, this could be uh, maybe the effect is blowing up, maybe um, just we don't want to hear that sound anymore, it could be whatever you want. Um, but that's the, the main part right there. Um, so now if I run this, we should hear some sounds. I'm going to turn some stuff out of, down on my speakers and we should start hearing some things. <laughs> Pressing that stops the sound. Happening over to the second one. It's a little hard with these shorter sounds, but this is stopping all the, the files. And then the third one. Yeah, that rings for just a little bit more as opposed to... And then that stops it. Um, that's what we have right here. So the next thing I'm going to do is decide what effects I want to have. And I'm just going to go to the tone... Um, the tone docs right there. This will be in the description down below. And we're going to look at the effects. So there's a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, there's a few things you could even consider to be effects, depending on your inclination and experience, in the component section as well. We're not going to get into that debate right now. Uh, but I'm going to pick... Uh, what do I want to pick? What do you think, Bean? Let's do a frequency shifter. Um... And let's do a delay. And we'll leave it at that. Um, there's a handful you can pick from, but we'll, we'll use a frequency shifter and a delay. So again, I've got another video about uh, utilizing and setting up these effects. Um, I'll have that uh, at some point popping up at the top of the screen, but let's just 
get into it. So let um, I'll just call this shifter and uh, del for delay. We're gonna use those. So at this point, you could oh hi. Uh, you don't have to make it in preload like I'm going to. Uh, you could make these effects in setup, but I like to set up all my bits in one spot if I can. So I'm going to utilize preload in order to make these effects. So that way they're just made and ready to go before we even get into the real part of the code that does anything. So uh, shifter is a new tone dot frequency shifter. Very catchy name. Uh, so do, 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 do. from there, we need a few things. So um, we need to give it a value to start with. Um, and that's pretty much what we need right there. There's looks like there's some other stuff we can work with. No, I'm looking at the oscillator. No, um, the argument is just how many, um, you know, uh, hertz, I think. Yeah, the frequency at which we're going to shift something up or down. Um this could be a looks like it can be a note or a uh, or a hurt or um, you know a, a number. So let's see what we've got here as an option. Uh, frequency, frequency. Yeah, that's not very useful for what I want to do, but uh, that's okay. So we could set this up um, in a handful of ways. Uh, but for right now, I'm going to have it default to zero, but we don't want it to show. We just want to hear the sound and then we're going to change that parameter with the sliders that we're going to make momentarily. Um, and then DEL is going to be same process, new tone dot. Uh, this one is a ping pong delay. And looking at the ping pong delay, uh, we have a few things. They are, um, you know, at what rate to change it and how much to feed it back. Um, so we can play around with that. I'm just gonna, uh, you know, give it a, a default. Is there, um, is there a minimum? No, there's not. Um, so we're just gonna give it an arbitrary thing of half a second. So. At 500, I'm assuming it's in milliseconds. We're going to find out. Um, and then we'll feed back half, you know, um, half of the signal each time. Um, we'll play around with it, figure, figure out what we like. But um, we have this here. So, again, this first effect is going to shift the pitch of our sound files up or down by an amount. The second one is going to delay them, and it will actually ping pong between the left and right speakers at a rate of one delay every, I'm again, assuming milliseconds. Um, oop, there we are. Again, assuming milliseconds. Um, doesn't say whether or not it's in seconds or milliseconds, I think. Um, either way, but there, and then the um, feedback percentage, which is, again, just the uh, amount that's fed back into each consecutive echo. And that's pretty much that. Um, what I'm going to do next is actually remove the dot to destination here, and I'm going to uh, go beneath having made the effects, and we're just going to say multiplayer dot chain, and we're going to hook up all of that. Actually, We'll do, do it like this. We won't use chain. We'll use it's called fan. I'm gonna try something. I'm trying something new and you know not planned. It's not there. It's in. If it's, if it's here, it's in player. Fan. Actually, was it there? Was. Yeah, okay, it is fan. So we can connect it to um, multiple things in a sequence. So what I'll do is say multiplayer dot fan, and we'll fan it to the shifter and delay. So 
So this way we can have the effects working um, independently of each other. We don't have to go through one, then the other. And then it, from here, we'll say dot to destination on both of these. So at this point, we have one sound source that then splits into two that then move uh, you know, together until we get to the, back to the single destination. Uh, so these are happening what we call in parallel to each other at the same time, but they don't affect each other. Um, we're going to try this because I haven't tried the fan one for this project before. Um, so those are all set up. And now if we refresh this and we play the sound, we should hear the ping pong delay, but not the shift. <laughs> A little bit, about half each time. Uh, stopping the playback doesn't stop the um, the signals. There's other ways we could do that to stop the sound immediately, but we can work on that as we need to. If people want to hear how to do that, uh, put it in the comments, and I'll make it into another video. Uh, but just to, again, illustrate here is the second sound. And the third. We're going to stop that um, so it'll fade out. Um, and I'm now going to make my sliders. So we'll call this the uh, pitch slider and the, um, the pong slider. Why not? Because um, we're going to control the pitch being shifted and the, um, the duration between the ping pongs. So uh, just like making the buttons, we have to make the sliders. And it's... a similar process to start with. So um, we'll go here and say, um, I'm just going to copy these to make life easy. Uh, it was pitch and pong slider. So this one is a um, going to be create slider. It helps if I spell that right. And this one is going to be also create slider. So this takes a few more arguments. I have a whole other video uh, about this in a lot more detail, but uh, the short version of it is you need a minimum, a maximum, a default, and then any um, you know steps or if it's going to free flow between them. So um, let me just hop back over into frequency shifter. We're going to look at the frequency. This is just a value uh, frequency if we hopped over into here. Okay, it's actually a signal. So um, anything in tone here that's registered as a signal, uh, we have to add one extra step when hooking up these sliders. Uh, that's just what I kind of wanted to know right there. I also want to do a quick Google um, Hertz, Hertz in a half step. I think it's 100. Um, we're going to find it. Oh, wait. No, that involves... What am I thinking? That, that's going to be a whole pain in the ass. We're not going to do it like that. I was thinking I could get it so each step of the slider would do a like a step up and down a keyboard. We definitely can. I don't want to do that math right now, so uh, we're just going to make it be a kind of slider. So we're going to just give it a range of, hmm, let's say, negative... I'm picking, I'm thinking of a number. Let's just go negative 500 to 500, default of zero. Um, and we'll, we won't give it any steps. I think that's all we can, we'll work with there. Uh, the Pong slider to control the, um, the delay time. I think that one will also be a signal, but we're going to look. Yep, signal um, and the delay time. So... For this one, we'll give it a range of 50 milliseconds to, um, let's go all the way up to two sec two seconds. So 2,000 milliseconds on the high end. We'll give it the default of 500. Now, if you look at these, boom, they have loaded up, although they look kind of gross because they blend in with the background right here because we haven't moved them onto the canvas. So pitch slider dot position. 
and we'll put this, you know, in right. We got this nice empty area right here. So let's go 200. Well, let's just go 175, comma, um, I don't know, 150. Let's just see what that looks like. All right, let's scoot it over a bit. Actually, let's move this down to 200. And we'll scoot this over to 100 again. Yeah, sure. Why not? We'll make it. We'll make them all line up here. It'll be a kind of weird setup, but whatever. Um, copy, paste, and this is now Pong slider, and we're gonna stick you just right underneath it. So at two twenty-five, right there. So right now. There's nothing inherently wrong. You can see we have the different defaulting values right here. These sliders kind of freely move as, as needed, and every time we refresh it, it resets back to the default. Um, so that's it, but you'll notice there's no labels by default. So what I'm going to do actually is scoot this up a little bit. We'll say uh, 175 and 250. Actually, no, I lied. Uh, we're going to put the labels over here. Um, so with a slider, again, you have to put your own label there. So I'm going to hop into the draw function, and we're just going to use the text function right there. Um, and we're going to stick that first one. Uh, we will say this is the um, pitch shifter. And we will put this at, uh, let's see, do, 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 do. we're just going to arbitrarily say... 250, um, 200, copy, paste, delay time, and we'll scoot this down to, wait, why did, did I get the 500 from? That should be 200. This should be 225. There we are. All right, let's get them down just a hair to 10 to 35. This is the thing I don't like about working with sliders is that they don't really have a default um, label aspect. And we'll move this to 235 <coughs> just to pull it in a little closer to that slider. So, <coughs> excuse me, I blame Bean. So now we're actually pretty close to being done. Uh, we have the sounds that can play, the effects. Uh, I'm assuming the pitch shifter works because so, it's defaulting to zero, but we could test that by uh, putting it at, I don't know that. Um, compared to... So that one's working too. So now we just need to connect the um, the sliders here to these effects so we can change them in real time. Um, in order to do that, we have to do this in the draw function because we need to check and update this every frame. So in order to do this, we have to talk to the effects first and then just assign them the value of the slider. It's pretty pretty simple when you actually look at it. So we have to talk to the effects. So let's start with the, I called it shifter. Yeah, shifter and Dell. Shifter and Dell are the two we're gonna work with. So shifter dot, and then the parameter name was frequency. Now, if you think back to a few minutes ago, I mentioned that uh, things are a little bit different and require one step for every parameter that is marked as a signal in tone. I'm not going to break down everything, but basically it just means that stuff has to happen at the signal rate, which uh, is defaulted again to the 44,100 uh, times a second. Uh, might be higher, might be lower, but it's whatever the audio rate of your system is. Uh, in order to do that, we just have to say dot frequency dot value every time we see 
that it's labeled as a signal. If it's not, we can just say the name of the parameter. So dot value. We assign that to our slider. So that was pitch slider dot value. And for the sliders, it's a method. So we need the parentheses on this one. This may look a little confusing, but I mean, that's really all there is to it is we assign the parameter or the effect parameter. And if it's a signal, a value. Oh, are you going away? My bean. Uh, you is, again, the effect parameter and sometimes the value of that parameter uh, gets assigned to be the uh, pitch slider. We're just going to look at whatever that current value is and we can set up the ranges of our sliders as needed. Um, so for this one, it was delay time. So del dot delay time dot value gets assigned. Um, pong slider dot value. And that should be all of it. We're going to test it out right now. If I refresh this, uh, I'm going to play the first sound. I'll turn it up a little bit in my speakers just so I can hear it better, but it should stay the same level in yours. <laughs> gonna take a second to fade out there's no reverb so it just kind of sticks on each one um, if we pulled up sound two so the delay time doesn't seem to be changing so the delay signal time yeah let me tweak some things so what if I did this because sometimes I wonder if that'll fix it. So, hmm. No. Hmm. why don't you work? Delay time. The delay time signal. Like, yeah, that's that's all there. That was weird. Um, it should just be a number, right? I don't care about signal. I want a time. Does this have anything? No. Um, hmm. Well, that was weird. I don't know why that's not working. So we're just going to pick a different effect real quick. Uh, we're going to hop over into feedback delay. It does pretty much the same thing, but doesn't, um, you know, doesn't uh, ping pong back in time. So we're just going to change it to feedback delay and everything else should be the same. Let's see if this updates it. If I refresh the code, value must be within. Okay, at least now we're getting an error. Okay, so let's just tweak our slider real quick. Zero to 500. So we're going to go, well, zero to 500. And we'll have it default at, I'll say, 100. different okay so oh this is happening so fast that okay so now it's going 
I don't know what that weird bit was. That just kind of threw me off for a second. But uh, if things aren't working, uh, experiment around. There's usually a pretty similar effect if one of them isn't quite working. Not sure exactly what that was about. But we're now at the end of the code. So again, if you're a student in my class turning this in, you need a total of eight sounds and four effects. You can set it up like so in order to utilize the fan method and just affect the parameters uh, like that. You can change the sound up that way. There's another option, however, and that is I'll do this part in comments right here. Um, uh, just so, oh, welcome back, Bean. Hi. Um, and that is, you could set it up so we have multi um, player dot um, chain. And we'll, this is what I was originally going to do, but then decided to try something new on the fly. Um, and we'll send it through the, um, I don't know, the delay first, then the shifter, uh, and then to the tone, oops, shifter, comma. Phone dot destination, just like that. Um, so we can chain it up like so. And then in the draw function, uh, we would set something up like this. Shifter dot, let me just make sure I'm not missing something. Um, we're going to pull up the wet property. It is a signal. Okay. Signal dot wet dot value equals... Um, Shift slider. Is that what I called it? A pitch slider. Pitch slider dot value. And that would be in the um, in the draw function. So what this will do, um, a wet value, the wet parameter is just when it's something is 100% wet, it's all of the signal. And then if it is 100% uh, dry, it's none of the signal. So what that would mean is you could have your slider go from zero to one, you know, because it, it does a decimal value. And at zero, you don't hear the effect at all. It just passes it through to the, the next thing. And then you could bring up the effect um, to make to be the processed sound. So... Um, I guess just to I'll illustrate what that sounds like, but at this point, this would work for my students. You don't have to go about this to go. So if I just took this and uh, temporarily commented it out, and then we can comment out this part. Um, uncomment this. Can you not destroy my things, Bean? That'd be cool. Um, I head into draw, do that. We'll um, we'll leave the de the delay slider the same, um, but now we can affect the um, the parameters. And I'm gonna set my pitch slider to go from um, zero row to uh, one. Um, at a, and we'll start at zero. Why not? So if I refresh this. We get that. Um, so now what we should hear is if I run a set, uh, if I uh, also need to give this another default value, so we'll just put this at 250. Um, refresh all that. Um, <clears throat> and now I'm going to run my sound and slowly bring up the pitch shifter. <laughs> It, it kind of worked. I missed one thing. I'm gonna keep... I am doing a thing. We snuggled earlier. Thank you. Kids, am I right? Um, and I'll just give it a, a step size of really small, so that way we don't just jump from number to number. Um... Now, 
Okay, now it's nice and quiet in my speaker. So this is just to illustrate one of the two ways you could set up your project. That being that your sliders are either controlling a, um, a parameter uh, of the effect and you're always going to hear a some kind of affected sound, or you could um, you know, essentially hard code the effect parameters and have the, uh, the sliders affect the wet dry ratio. So you could hear the raw versus process sound for how I'm grading and focusing. Either one is fine because either one, you, you need the same skill set to do it. So I'll leave that up to interpretation. Um, so that's pretty much that. Like I said, this code will not be, um, you know, post it in the description because I want my students to, you know, they could pull this up and code along with me, but I want them to do it themselves. So I'll just kind of give it a quick scroll through for anyone who's not in my class. Um, and yeah, you can always rewatch the video, but that's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward. We just uh, load up the sounds, tell them to play, tell them to stop, tell them how we're going to change them. That's, you know, I'm again, summarizing a lot, but that's pretty much it. Oh tidy that up. Um, if you want access to this code, um, you know, leave a comment down below and uh, we'll, you know, get in touch and work all that out. That's going to be it for me. And that went on for a little longer than I thought. Um, and we're going to end that pretty much right here. So Bean, say bye. She finally got comfy after I got angry at her. All right, so I'll see you all the next time that I see you. Bye.